Well, this is Dr. Morton, uh, and I'm going to give you a little introduction to uh, computer engineering. Now, in all fairness, uh, full disclosure, uh, I'm not a uh, computer engineer. I, uh, I mean, I guess you could say I am by virtue of uh, what I teach, but, <clears throat> but I went to Purdue as an undergrad, and then I did my graduate work at the University of Missouri, and uh, I actually uh, got my master's and PhD uh, in a uh, uh, bioengineering program that was within an electrical engineering department, and then I went to medical school. So I'm probably more of a biomedical engineer than, <clears throat> than I am a uh, computer engineer. However, uh, <clears throat> I've never really done a whole lot of uh, biomedical engineering except for, I guess, my even my uh, PhD thesis was pretty much purely electrical engineering. Uh, <clears throat> so I guess you'd have to say I'm probably more of an electrical engineer, really, than anything. In any event, all that really does is just illustrate how, uh, how there's a lot of crossover in engineering. Every single product that's produced today has both mechanical, electrical uh, parts of it, and if it's used by humans, it's got some uh, it's got some uh, bioengineering too. So, uh, so unless you're building a road, you're pretty much involved with, uh, and even then, you're you're involved with a whole lot of uh, uh, interdisciplinary things as an engineer. And uh, computer engineering is maybe the ultimate interdisciplinary engineering because it really is a marriage between computer science and electrical engineering. Now, obviously, computers began as as uh, as a uh, um, uh, from the electrical engineering side of the of the world because they were made entirely of electronic components. Um, and by the word, wait, the word electronic and electrical are have often been sort of very confused. Um, and just to make that clear, uh, the concept of electronical engineering or electronics is pretty much gone. Uh, electronics had to do with uh, the control of electron flow in a vacuum. Uh, think vacuum tubes. So people who designed things with vacuum tubes were, quote, electronic engineers. But most schools never adopted that that rubric. That was only adopted by a few schools trying to sort of distinguish themselves. Most schools uh, lumped everything into electrical engineering, uh, whether it was uh, vacuum tubes or whatever. And of course, today we don't have many vacuum tubes, almost none. Uh, so today we control the flow of electrons in solid state materials. Uh, that, strictly speaking, wouldn't be considered electronics using the old definitions. Uh, but everything really falls into electrical engineering. Uh, computer engineering really just brings in the notion that we're going to involve some computer science. Um, and I think even that's confusing because um, uh, computer science has taken on so many different things. And computer science, again, uh, since electrical engineers invented computers, uh, obviously the, uh, the program languages that these computers required was also developed by electrical engineers. Now, it, it has spun off and become a, quote, science in itself. Uh, and the science involves things like algorithms, um, optimized ways to do things, uh, and, and some of that optimization is spilled into uh, how we compile programming languages and how a compiler can take your code and make it better when it compiles it. Uh, that's pretty much pure uh, computer engineering, or sorry, computer science. Uh, but pretty much everything other than that uh, still involves the, uh, the computer engineering, electrical engineering world. Okay, well, enough from my rant. Um, so let me uh, so let me switch to some slides here, and uh, I'll shrink my I'll put these on, and then I'll try and shrink myself down. So uh, okay, so I'm going to move myself around here, and hopefully find a place where I can be um, somewhat incognito. Not quite there, so let's move myself up. Okay, ah, that's pretty good right there. All right, so computer engineering, basically, uh, this is 
from the catalog, our catalog at UTSA. Computer engineering gives the students the opportunity to acquire broad engineering skills and knowledge to enable them to design and implement computer and, di and digital systems. The di discipline of computer engineering includes topics such as, um, and I'm going to move this over a little bit so you can read this. So logic design, digital systems design, discrete mathematics, computer organization, embedded system design, which includes the uh, assembly programming of microprocessors, high-level programming of micros, and interfacing of processors to other circuits. Uh, and then hardware, hardware description languages. Uh, I need to fix this, but anyway, uh, the, uh, the catalog actually has this kind of wrong. HDLs are hardware description languages, and uh, they used different words, which I didn't totally fix. And we, we have courses that, where we uh, teach you how to, to learn uh, Verilog, one of the main hardware description languages, and use it to program a field programmable gate array, uh, including laboratories where we'll actually test our, and run our code. And then uh, uh, Dr. John teaches a, a class in a very large scale integrated circuit design, VLSI design, and he uses one of the modern uh, tools, Cadence, uh, to, to teach this. Um, the fundamental electrical, fundamental electrical engineering disciplines, mathematics and science. So these are the main topics in the curriculum. And uh, this, by the way, is the board that uh, uh, we use in Micro uh, One. Uh, this actually is, uh, it was one of our uh, prototype uh, runs. So we all, I always do red when we run prototypes, uh, but the students boards are black with white letters. Um, and uh, we tend to update this every year or so and uh, at some point, probably in the near future, I'm going to expand it to a much bigger format and include some additional circuits. Uh, but anyway, we do 10 laboratories with this board. We pick and place the surface mount components in my garage, and then we have the students solder on the three hole com the through hole components, such as the switch, the plug, the the two big uh, uh, 10 pin double row headers, uh, the uh, adapter for the snap programmer. Uh, six, a five-pin header for analog things, a six-pin header for our for our uh, dongle to connect to to laptops, um, a little two-pin header and a, another little two-pin header and a push button, and uh, then two three-pin jumpers, one here and one up here where you can't see because of the uh, reflections. Um, <clears throat> well, actually, there are LEDs there, and there's a RGB LED here, and there's the chip we use, a PIC 16F1829, currently, anyway. Um, all right, so the hour requirements. To get a, your BS in computer engineering, which is an accredited degree by ABET at uh, the University of Texas, San Antonio, you have to take 126 hours. Uh, 39 of those hours have to be in upper division level courses, and 42 must be on campus at UTSA. Um, you could transfer in with other credits, but uh, you, a minimum of 42 must be taken here. There are also, 42, it just happens, different number, have to be uh, in our core curriculum. Uh, and uh, we have a, um, there's a website, I think I can bring it up by clicking on this. Let's see if that happens. So here's the catalog, and this is uh, one of the things to look at. And uh, if you look at degrees, BS in electrical engineering, BS in computer engineering, and then we have an integrated BSMS program. You can double major in electrical and computer. There's only about six or nine hours difference, I think, something like maybe nine hours difference. So it's not that difficult a thing to do uh, should you want to do that. I don't know the pros and cons. It probably adds a semester uh, at least. Uh, so if we click on the uh, BS in computer engineering, you'll see here are the here are the, uh, the the core curriculum and probably a better thing to look at is down here where we, we go through the years and this is a good thing for you to do. Uh, you probably can't see this very well uh, and let me see if I can ex enhance it a little bit. Yeah, that's better. All right, so the first year uh, and let me slide let me see if I can, I think I should be able to slide. Uh, I think this is, yeah, okay. So so the first year involves uh, some of these core requirements. Um, uh, 
general chemistry, calculus one, freshman composition. Uh, and then uh, in the spring, you can take uh, logic design. That's the course I teach. There's a separate logic design laboratory that's uh, taught by a different professor. That's just a one hour course where you get, get to work with some digital circuits. Uh, and, in, and logic design is a lecture based course where we cover uh, the fundamentals of, uh, of, of the digital design process, including AND gates and OR gates and all, all the various features of that. And then Calc 2, and then physics uh, with a, its composite lab, with its uh, associated laboratory, freshman Comp 2, and then uh, CS uh, 20, uh, 2073 or CPE 2073, which I totally recommend you take the CPE version. Uh, taught by uh, Bob Apollon, uh, who's uh, quite excellent, uh, and I think uh, you'll probably get more out of it than you will the CS version. Sometimes the CS course has been taught very well, uh, other times uh, less so, but Bob's very good, so probably should try and get in CPE if you can. Uh, and then the second year, uh, Discrete Mathematics is a computer science course, and then Network Theory, AE1, uh, e, sorry, EA1, Applied Engineering Analysis 1, Physics 2, and its uh, associated lab, Circuits 1, uh, Signals and Systems, and then Microcomputer Systems, uh, which uh, is the course I just mentioned that I teach, uh, and we make our own boards in that course and then use them for 10 labs. We learn how to program an assembly language, and, and then we switch to C uh, for the fourth lab and uh, beyond. Uh, and then you do a final project as well and then EA2. Uh, and then we do uh, digital systems design, uh, which I also teach where we learn hardware description languages. Uh, <clears throat> then we have the electrical and computer engineering lab, uh, data C++ and data structures, electronic devices. Um, and uh, then uh, systems programming for engineers, uh, probability and stochastics, uh, stochastic processes, uh, computer org uh, and um, introduction to American politics uh, and then uh, in the fall uh, computer engineering design one uh, this is your uh, senior design course this is the design this is the two hour design phase and then the uh, three hour where you actually build phase is the spring semester and then uh, electrical and computer engineering lab two and then Texas politics and society and then you have uh, two electives and a creative arts uh, uh, core requirement, as well as uh, two more tech electives and a uh, component area option. And that is your 126 hours, uh, which hopefully you can do in four years, although that is uh, tends to be tricky. Um, <clears throat> so that's sort of how it breaks down. So you have these 22 general engineering requirements, CHEM, Calc 1 and 2, EA 1, and then EA 2 is an engineering uh, is a uh, ECE requirement, and then Physics 1 and 2, uh, which we looked at. And then these are the ECE courses, which we also just looked at, but I'm just laying them out here a little differently. And, and um, okay, and then uh, there are these supporting courses, uh, this uh, Introduction to Computer Programming, Discrete Math, and Probability and Statistics. So, so uh, in, in uh, and then finally, these are these are your elective choices and you get four of these in your senior year um, and you can see some of these i certainly recommend uh, i teach microcomputer systems too uh, but some of these others are really quite good as well and maybe even better in some cases and then some math electives i definitely recommend linear algebra um, okay um, but what does a computer engineering major actually do well so that's a good that's a good question, um, and I guess uh, to to answer that is somewhat complicated. Uh, the uh, so it certainly integrates computer science and electrical engineering. Uh, you can sort of primarily focus on the software side, or you can focus on the hardware side, or you can really probably slide yourself into a, just a standard electrical engineering type position. Uh, on the, on the hardware and software side, uh, or you can be in a place where you're really dealing with both, like an embedded design. 
Um, embedded design and, and the microprocessor world is certainly what I really uh, enjoy and I find uh, really exciting. It turns out these days, every single product that's going to be made in the future and today, currently, almost, uh, if it is has any level of complexity, has a, a microprocessor built into it. And all of the conventional uh, products that used to have just purely mechanical parts, very well, they might have had motors, but uh, they would have mechanical switches for the motors, mechanical timers. But they wouldn't have had a digital controller. Now they have a digital controller. Uh, and that's simply because uh, these, these digital systems are more robust. They allow the manufacturer to build in all sorts of features. Uh, and, uh, and, and as we move along, we're going to uh, see that these features will include uh, such features as uh, monitoring the health of the, of the appliance. Say, say, for instance, say it's a washing machine. Uh, currently, the old washing machines had these big dials on them with uh, lots and lots of uh, switches and there would be a mechanical uh, little motor that would, would turn the dial uh, so that it would mark off time. And uh, as it went through the different phases of the wash cycle, switches would turn on and turn off, which would cause relays to close and open and turn on motors, pumps, and, uh, and change the gearing on the, on the tub to change it from uh, the agitation function to the uh, spin function and uh, change open and close water valves and things like this to uh, to cause to do the wash and rinse cycles and and uh, and get your clothes clean. Well, those mechanical things uh, were always uh, breaking down and eventually would wear out, would get dirty, and would have problems. And a, a digital controller can hang in there much longer. Of course, there's still things that will break, but what the modern digital controller will do will have all sorts of sensors wired into uh, the, the the appliance that will monitor. Uh, things like water pressure and temperature, uh, spin rate, and other things, and can detect when the system's function is degrading. And then uh, it, can, it can be uh, connected to the Wi-Fi network within the home, or even use an Internet or thing, uh, uh, LoRa WAN type uh, connection to talk uh, to a node and to report the health of the machine back to the manufacturer, uh, you know, on a weekly basis or maybe more frequently than that. And the company can then detect, oh, well, this, this washing machine is about, it's having this particular problem, and they can go ahead and uh, dispatch a uh, repairman to the house uh, who will knock on the door and inform the, 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 uh, the person uh, at the home that uh, their washing machine is about ready to break, and they're there with the replacement part or the corrective uh, procedure. Uh, this is where we're going, and, uh, and I, I, I can't imagine um, there, there's anything that's going to stop this. Uh, it may be may look a little different than I described, but uh, but these are what that this is how products are going to be, and um, they're also going to be very smart. There may even be tags on your clothes that you scan, and then the washer knows what cycle to use. And uh, you know who knows. I mean, it's all sorts of uh, um, amazing things, and it you know will beep and tell you no, don't put that article in with this load. It, it's incompatible, or whatever. Uh, so. When you include a smart, when you include a computer in any device, you make it smarter and you give it uh, a lot of capability that can be built in. Now, interestingly, that capability must be created. Who creates that capability? Well, that's what computer engineers do. Uh, you write the software uh, that interacts with the hardware that makes these really cool things happen. And I think it's very exciting. I think this, uh, the future is uh, just uh, limitless, really. Um, so, we call the software that's on an embedded controller firmware because it doesn't get changed much. It's, it's usually flashed in and it, it's there uh, uh, in a read-only memory uh, running until the product's retired or there may be an occasional uh, firmware upgrade. But other than that, that firmware is not going to change day to day. Um, you, can, you can certainly be involved in designing uh, the next, uh, uh, the next embedded controller, or the next, uh, you could be involved with the, the gigantic teams that, that develop the Intel and the AMD chips for desktops and laptops, or you could uh, even be involved in supercomputers or uh, maybe even cloud computers as they come online. Um, 
you can also, um, besides the firmware, you can get involved in the software side all the way up to uh, major operating systems for, uh, for major installations. Uh, so um, the, uh, we have the Open Cloud Institute here, um, and uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a fairly capable uh, cloud in itself uh, with uh, the opportunity to use it to do research and actually to explore all sorts of, uh, of uh, novel ways of delivering these services and uh, developing the software to control them. Uh, from virtual machines to, uh, to you know, uh, virtual backups and all sorts of stuff. Um, so, uh, and then obviously, every uh, we're moving rapidly into the age of autonomous vehicles for uh, everybody. Uh, we're pretty much all going to be uh, sitting in a, in a car that's uh, going to be self-driven soon. Uh, I don't know how soon, but I'm betting within 20 years. Uh, and I, I, I cite a number of reasons for why this is likely to happen, but uh, most, most likely is that we will save lives. Something uh, along the lines of one and a half million people a year are killed in automobile accidents worldwide. And the, we, clearly, uh, autonomous vehicles might have problems, but all they have to be better than is, is an impaired driver, a drunk driver, basically, or a stone driver. Uh, and we already can now do that. So it, it's going to take working through, uh, you know, public acceptance, uh, uh, litigation, uh, you know, of who's at fault when there is an accident. Uh, there's there are a number of things, but uh, the technology is is pretty much in hand. It's just a matter of of making the devices and putting it putting it into operation. Um, and when you could save a million and a half lives a year uh, or something close to that, there'd probably still be people killed in automobile accidents, even with self-driving cars because of mechanical failures. I think something something like less than 5% of accidents now are mechanically uh, related. But even there, it's possible that an, automa that, that an autonomous vehicle would have the smarts to, to save itself, to detect that failure perhaps before it occurs, or if it doesn't, detect it before it occurs, to be able to do the defensive driving to preserve the life of the occupants um, uh, when it does occur. Uh, so, and, and part of this is going to be, uh, all vehicles are going to be talking to each other and to talking to uh, controllers at intersections. And, you know, in a, in a not too distant future, maybe there won't be any stoplights or stop signs anymore. Uh, your car will just be sequenced through the intersection. And at rush hour, instead of going five miles an hour and hitting the, the, the brake every few seconds, you'll be whizzing along at 70 miles an hour with the same number of vehicles on the road because they'll be all controlled uh, electronically and they'll be sequenced at about 10 foot intervals and everybody will go 70 and there won't be some stupid idiot on the inside lane trying to, trying to cross all four lanes to exit, hitting his brakes and causing the huge backups that result in rush hour traffic. Uh, so those days are actually something to look forward to, I think. Um, so uh, let's see. So a couple other things. Uh, certifications. One of the things that's uh, more relevant for the CPE, uh, the computer engineer, are these certifications. So there is a professional engineer certification since 03. Um, this may become more relevant as uh, we have more and more devices where there are safety features that depend upon uh, software, and uh, you may see this uh, pushed. Uh, there, ha there are some classic uh, uh, accident uh, case studies uh, related to uh, people who, who have uh, uh, made some really bad software decisions, uh, and um, in including causing people to die and whatnot. So you'll probably see this pushed over time. Uh, the uh, Cisco. Corporation offers these certifications for network expertise, different levels and different things. Um, clearly, if you ever tried to hook up your own network, you know that uh, uh, knowledge would, is very helpful. Uh, Microsoft offers a number of certifications for various Windows and Windows hosted products like SQL Server, Azure, some other ones. And uh, they offer, uh, you know, th these global things like uh, Microsoft uh, Professional Developer 
certification and things like that. And then the Certified Information Security Manager. This is a, a, a hot and a moving topic. Uh, currently, the, this requires five years experience, and then you have to pass an exam, and you have to be re-examined every three years to prove you're keeping up. Um, what are some skills that are needed? Well, you need to be able to code and manage, maybe even manage software development, maybe with a team of coders. You need to be able to troubleshoot hardware and software problems. You need to be a team player because most, most of the things that uh, you'll be developing will be uh, uh, being produced by you know reasonably sized corporations with uh, good numbers of people with different uh, uh, abilities. For instance, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, uh, computer engineers, um, maybe even computer science folks um, on the team. Uh, not to mention the salespeople and the marketing people and all that. And then uh, the ability to develop interfaces between different software tools. One of the things that happens is many of our fancy software tools don't talk to each other. Uh, surprise, surprise. And uh, there's a continual and growing need for people to wade into these humongous uh, programs and make them uh, talk to each other. Um, so some of the specialty areas, uh, coding, crypto, cryptography, information protection, communication, wireless networks, compilers and operating systems. This is pretty squarely um, CS related, uh, but a CPE could definitely be involved in this as well. Uh, computational science and engineering, uh, faster ways to do things, uh, deep learning's a big part of this, uh, neural nets, deep neural nets, all sorts of crazy things and the tools to do these things have just exploded. Computer networks, mobile computing, distributed systems, uh, and then just the architecture, the ability to uh, parallel uh, our algorithms so we can bring uh, uh, more com computational power to bear on them, uh, and, then, uh, and then fault tolerant, dependable systems. Computer vision and robotics. Um, uh, computer vision is huge, uh, you know, facial recognition. I spent, uh, taught a course in China in the summer of 19, uh, not this summer, but last summer. And uh, in Shanghai, wherever you go, you are officially recognized all the time. It is amazing. Uh, driving a car, uh, we didn't drive obviously, but if you drive a car in Shanghai, uh, not only is your license plate red, and, but your face, all the faces of the occupants are red, uh, probably every uh, quarter mile to half mile, no more than a mile probably between uh, cameras. Uh, it's just crazy. Um, uh, also in, in China, everything, uh, they don't like credit cards and they don't like cash. Everything is bought with your cell phone. In fact, you uh, go into a restaurant, the waitress doesn't come over and take your order. You, you have to do the menu on your cell phone and then send it in on the cell phone. And you can ask questions when the waitress comes or waiter comes. Um, so embedded systems, uh, Integrated circuits, VLSI design, testing, big, big area, and uh, computer automated design, which of course is what we use for almost everything today. Signal processing, image and speech processing, and then not to leave out quantum computing. We probably have a few more years before quantum computing is going to be uh, making its uh, presence felt in a big way, uh, but I'm pretty sure that will eventually happen. Uh, there are quite a few problems to overcome first. The biggest one is uh, scaling it up to get a big enough quantum computer to do really useful things. We're a long way from that. And also figuring out how to create algorithms that uh, that can collapse to the solution we're interested in um, versus a random solution we're not interested in. Uh, <clears throat> okay, um, so I think that pretty much covers a lot of what I wanted to do.